my dear friends good evening to all of you so you are preparing for upsc civil service examination and the prelims 2023 will happen on this uh, may 28th february 21st is the last day to apply for this uh, prelims 2023 so if you had not applied please do that visit uh, upsc official website and there you can apply coming to modern india uh, sorry coming to history we know that in the preliminary examination in paper 1 there are some king subjects you know history economy geography polity environmental science science and tech current affairs majority questions are asked from these subjects only for many aspirants history is a huge headache year history is a tension for many aspirants many are confused to what kind of the study material i should prepare for history or how to i prepare whether i should learn only modern india or i should skip ancient medieval what to do with art and culture uh, many confusions are there so in this session i will give you an idea what all things you have to avoid when it comes to learning or preparing history for your upsc examination first thing okay all of you watch this video till end it will definitely benefit you first thing i would say there is pre 2011 pattern and post 2011 pattern what does it mean upsc changed its prelims pattern in 2011 so whatever the pattern upsc set before 2011 that doesn't matter you have to follow from 2011 only because before that upsc mostly asked you factual questions from history now they started asking analytical conceptual questions from history even though fact questions are there for example there was a question it was like a uh, kalhana is written by or maybe uh, akbar built bulan darwaza that was to celebrate what father of indian civil services or father of indian police reforms or who conceived the idea of this permanent settlement the main objective of permanent settlement this type of the questions were there okay, you know mostly they are factual questions upsc used to ask from history what type of questions what is this what is that who is this who is that that type of the questions before especially before 2011 then from 2011 onwards or after 2011 you can see upsc started asking why type of questions they changed from what to why instead of factual questions they started asking conceptual analytical questions so the understanding of the whole story which is very important rather than mugging up the name of the kings and queens okay understanding the story matters and it is not uh, learning by heart the facts and figures or the name of the king and queens and dynasties that alone is not enough for this examination just try to understand the crux of history understand the story of the history okay so your focus must be from fact to concept fact to analytics you how to change your pattern of preparation your method of preparation which is very important you know that is conceptual understanding you know rather than factual conceptual understanding which is very important and you should follow an order that is the second rule whether you should follow an order of course you should follow an order without knowing the flashback without knowing the current events current happenings you know only seeing the climax of a movie you can't understand anything you will not understand what is the what is the, what is the you know like a, a density or what is that a, a, like a, that a relevance of that final event similar way here also i would say that the order matters a lot if you learn medieval india without learning ancient india that is a stupid idea you learn modern india without studying ancient and medieval that is a stupid idea because it is a process of evolution you should know how the self government is evolved in india how the revenue system is evolved in india or how this is so called uh, like a local administration or central administration how the police system or how the so called uh, uh, i mean uh, architectures you know how these things evolved from time to time 
ancient India, you know, there is Indus Valley civilization. How Indus provided inputs to the other civilizations or other upcoming events of the history. Indus civilization, there is a Vedic age, there is Mahajanpadas, there is a cultural revolutions like Buddhism, Jainism, Shaivism, Vaishnavism. Then there is Mauryas and their government and governance and there is emperor, there is state concept. There is people's welfare, there is revenue policies, judicial policies, there is education system, there is a culture, there is religion, there is beliefs, there is international relations. How the system started evolving, Chanakya, Sartha Shastra. Okay, how the star system started evolving from that time to time, then there is post-Maurian age, ages, then Gupta, post-Gupta ages, then this early medieval India, Rashtraguda Sadar, or pa, you know Pala Sadar, or, or uh, Gurjara Pradihara Sadar, Imperial Chola Sadar. Okay, gradually it is evolving, the system is evolving. The political system, economic system, social system, cultural system, religious system, or our international relations, how it is slowly, gradually evolved from time to time. That evolution matters. So you follow an order, if you learn history, you give five days or six days for ancient India, same five or six days after finishing ancient India, next to five or six days for medieval India, then next to 10 or 15 days for modern India. That way in an order you follow, order you study history, that is very much required, understanding the chronology, understanding the sequel or prequel, that is very much important coming to history. It is not like other subjects, in other subjects you can study from anywhere, everywhere, that doesn't matter. But the history, if you really wish to know the entire story, Yes, start from the very beginning, start from Indus Valley civilization. About their culture, about their society, about their women, about their village, about their urban civilization, about their town planning, about their religion, about their international trade. You know how it is started evolving from time to time, phase to phase, you know, or civilization to civilization, and how it come up to that modern India, modern phase. This understanding is important. So follow an order, that is the second rule, I would say. Then next important thing is like, of course, this is again very important. Whether you should focus on Messi or you should invest on Mark Wright, that matters. Whether your investment is on Messi or your investment is on Mark Wright, which matters here. I mean, prioritization matters here. Whatever is much yielding, much rewarding, your focus must be on those areas here. For example, coming to ancient India, Indus civilization or the module on Indus civilization, it's a favorite area for UPC. Buddhism, Jainism is a favorite area for UPC. The cultural developments of ancient India is a favorite area for UPC. Similar way, coming to medieval India, certain core things are there. For example, Imperial Cholas are there, Delhi Sultanate is there, Mughal Empire is there. In Mughal Empire, Akbar the Great and his reforms are there. So here, your focus must be on the energy, the time, more practices, you should, you should invest on more rewarding areas, more yielding areas. Okay, that is what I said. In ancient India, in medieval India, in modern India, some very much rewarding areas are there, very much important areas are there. In those areas, you have to invest more time, more practice, more energy, more revisions. At the same time, some lesser yielding areas are there, lesser rewarding areas are there, just a reading, just an understanding is enough. But whichever is the core areas of uh, uh, history for UPC in ancient, medieval, modern, and ancient culture, those areas, you know, you have to invest more time, more revisions, more practices. That is very important. Now, next thing is, there is a question whether you should just follow this NCRT, just uh, NCRT only. For history, you should follow only NCRT or you should go for Aras Sharma, Sadish Chandra, Biban Chandra, B.L. Grover, uh, Shegar Bandobadai or uh, you know, loads of, loads of books are there. Loads of books are there. Actually, that is again a foolish idea. I am telling you, you follow that Buddha's middle path. What I am saying is, nowadays, the last 10 years trend or at least last 5 years trend is, those who read only NCRT, they can answer the questions in modern India, in prelims examination. You can't answer because NCRT based to one or two questions would be there. NCRT is just a basic understanding. 
It's for the basic understanding of the concepts. So it is always nice that you read. NCRT is a must to reading. There was a time lots of questions are answered from NCRT reading only. But nowadays, you know, yes, NCRT only reading NCRT is not a solution to solve all the 18 to 20 questions from history in prelims examination. Okay. So read NCRT and just have an advanced learning too. In the last one year's preparation, you might have done that. NCRT you read and some important uh, like uh, Mendes notes you might have followed or some important books you followed. At least uh, uh, this uh, Biban Chandra or Shagar Bandhavadai you followed for modern India. Initially, some additional work you done for your ancient and medieval. That is fine. I am not saying that you, you know, last 100 days you read new books. That is not my idea. Whatever you read, that is sufficient. But make sure that little bit, you know, you went ahead of this NCRT. You moved ahead of NCRT. NCRT is just the basics. That is the basic understanding. If you read that, that is fine. That is super fine. But go for some additional reading too. Additional reading too. I am telling you, you may have some material of your mentors, your academies, or uh, or, or you may have some uh, books, your additional advanced books you read. Whatever you read, that is fine. But revise it multiple rounds. Okay, that is important. Next is this particular triple R uh, strategy, which is read, revise, and review. Review means what I said is, it is rethink or it is uh, reanalysis for which you must practice questions. You read the book, that is fine. You read NCRT, that is fine. You read the industrialization. You read the historiography or you read this, uh, uh, what is called uh, social reforms of modern India. You read the freedom struggle, everything, cabinet mission, everything is fine. Now, what is important is after reading, revising, there is application. That matters a lot. You can't answer a single question of UPC prelims history until and unless you practice n number of questions. Because reading and revising, you know, it's kind of registering in the mind. Now, you, 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 you have to go to the next level of this preparation, that is application level. Application means, yes, whatever you learned, you know, try to apply the same knowledge while solving the questions. So, you have to practice questions, you know, you have to practice questions from ancient, medieval, modern and art and culture. That is one of the finest solution, finest, finest solution to consolidate that is to consolidate and that is to get the solid clarity about what you learned in the mind that is you know the solution is that is practicing application so once you learned once you prepared and revised next you go for its application level also for which you must practice questions while practicing questions attempting questions you will definitely think why this why not why that why this or why it is reversed or why it is that way why this the, this way why why this could be like this Lots of, because UPC actually, um, you know, demands thinkers in these services here. You know, they, that is why they changed the pattern also. From factual questions to conceptual analytical questions, why they changed the pattern? Because UPC not just you want like a, a, a pool of this uh, broiler chicken kind of the bureaucrats. They want some thinking. Uh, I mean, the people having that uh, skill of thinking, uh, rethinking and, and, and analyzing or critically analyzing, uh, you know, people or people with that caliber. Okay. So that thinking or that analysis that is possible only, you know, solving questions, in solving questions. So, take care of that aspect. Next important thing I would say, previous year questions. Why I say previous year questions? Of course, the same difference I said. Before 10 years or 15 years, you know, UPC's pattern was different. After 10 years, UPC's pattern is different. Every year after year, UPC, you know, make you surprised by the pattern and trend of the questions. Okay. So, in order to understand the trend and pattern of the questions, in order to understand what all the areas you have to prioritize, not to prioritize, what all the areas you have to focus, not to focus, in order to understand those things, yes, practicing previous year's questions, you know, that matters a lot. And how many years... Whether 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I would say you just practice at least from 2011. Before 2011, there is no need. Even from 2015 also, you can practice. From 2015 also. But the thing is, uh, you know, practicing questions which were being set before 2011, that uh, doesn't make any sense. You practice from 2011 onwards, okay? So, that, that I would say. Next thing is mocks. Mocks is important here. Because when you give the mock exams, you know, for example, a mock exam of ancient India or a medieval India or a modern India or uh, this uh, art and uh, culture, okay, art and culture, whatever you give. I would say 
100 questions are there, 100 questions and you made 45 right and 55 wrong. Okay, 45 right, 55 wrong and what will help every exam? You made 55 wrong, na? now you think about this 55, why this 55 is, yes, why this uh, uh, 55 is, you know, 55 is, five is made wrong. You will think about it, yes, because I don't know the concept, because I made the factual errors. Uh, because because it was a sentence was reversed, but I thought in that way or it was a chronological ascending order I, I thought in the descending order Okay, it was north to west, but I thought in the west to east order So what all the mistakes you commit in every paper you can think about it You can correct it and next time you will not because what all you corrected, you know 45 you made right that you may forget also but 55 you made wrong and if you've done that proper analysis, why you made each of them wrong, you will never forget those 55 questions. 55 into 4, think about that. Every question carries 4 choices. So that is the one of the finest way of revision. So why every mock is important? It is not about the number of the questions you made right. Why it, is, why it matters, why it is important? Because it's about the number of the questions you made wrong in the test. If you think about those 55 or 60 questions you made wrong, and if you have done that analysis, you will never forget those things in the, uh, you know, e even if they come in the next year, 10 years or after 20 years or so. So that is why mock test matters a lot. And also what all your, your, your weaknesses, that can be, your weaknesses will be reflected in the mocks and that can be corrected before the final exam, okay. So that's why mocks are very important, I would say, UPC standard mocks. Then I would say current affairs, how to approach current affairs? Suppose there is there is on Jalian Vallabhag, there is a current affair on Jalian Vallabhag. There is a current affair on Swami uh, Vivekananda or a current affair on this uh, Arvindo Ghosh or a current affair on this uh, particular event, for example, Komagadamaru incident or a current affair on this uh, like installing Buddha statue. Now, current affairs means why it is relevant because these are 100 to centenary celebrations or maybe the 100 anniversary celebrations were held in this area, Modi ji visited or chief minister visited, that is not important for you. If history, from history, any event, any event or uh, any person in the news means, you just to try to interlink that particular current affair with its uh, static past or its uh, static portion. Suppose Swami Vivekananda, a current affair on Swami Vivekananda uh, appeared. Now you focus on his achievements, contributions, ideologies and his relevance in Indian history. There is a question on Buddha's statue installed. Yes, learn about that uh, Buddha, Buddha's teachings, ideologies, his similarities and dissimilarities with the Jainism or his uh, teachings and that uh, relevance in modern day. That way, try to interlink that uh, current affair personality or event with its uh, historical relevance. You focus on their static portions, okay? That way you connect to that uh, current affair, history related current affair and its uh, history path, okay? So history, current affairs also can be learned along with this, but in history, they would not ask lots of uh, current affair oriented questions, even if they ask the personality and even just focus on, they will ask on its uh, historical uh, elements, okay? Now, next important thing I would say, yeah, next important thing I would say, yes, while learning this history, ancient, medieval, modern or art and culture, you can prepare small flow charts here. For example, the popular, uh, you know, land revenue reforms during this British rule or constitutional reforms during British rule or civil service reforms during British rule, educational reforms during British rule, or maybe cultural developments in ancient India, cultural developments in medieval India, thinkers and philosophers and the teachings of medieval India, all these things, you know, you can make separate, separate flow charts, flow charts that will be easy and handy for you to have quicker revisions on multiple rounds. Similar way, you can use sticky notes in the in the room in the in the bedroom or in the study room or in your hostel room wherever you study yes you can just while preparing this you can just make a short uh, you know sticky notes and stick on the wall whenever you get into the room you will read it and uh, revise it multiple rounds and uh, throw away next round the next uh, notes okay that is also a part of this revision a flow chart sticky notes uh, diagrams etc you can use Sometimes even you can record these things in your own voice and uh, just listen through your Bluetooth. That is also fine while jogging and running and all. 
then see one more thing i would say coming to history preparation yes history is not supposed to be taken as a headache maybe you left history after 10th standard but i am telling you history in a very relaxed manner you approach history suppose you are learning this mauryan empire you treat yourself as chandragupta you treat yourself as akbar the great sorry ashoka the great you learn mughal empire when you learn every person babar you think yourself as babar what all things you see in india why you fought panipat why you made this kind of the negotiations with the indians okay you are humayun you or you are akbar or you are shah jahan you are aurangzeb you just to try to uh, get yourself involved into that story that uh, event and things will be much easier for you to connect and to reconnect you got my point na so be relaxed uh, in a very 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 relaxed mood you approach learning this history you know it is not necessary you must read all these things sometimes you can watch some very interesting videos in the youtube also different mentors they give these uh, history videos in the youtube so very interesting videos you can watch in the youtube for different different concepts in history that is also part of learning but the most important things once you learned and revised it's very important to how practice you know upsc standard questions you have to practice a lot that application part is very important in this process of history preparation so these things all of you please take care this will definitely boost your chance of you know scoring very well with your history around uh, 15 to 20 number of questions can be asked to from history and it is always safe to study ancient medieval modern art and culture you know you study all this it is not like only modern india or only ancient india that strategy will not work out because last year less number of questions from modern india more questions from ancient medieval and art and culture so study all this in a decent way revise the multiple rounds practice the multiple rounds and uh, you will definitely score well from history uh, that's it all the best stay tuned and uh, just watch other classes which i have done for you in history path it's available in our youtube channel and for history option also we have another channel history option related videos you can watch there all the best thank you